This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by Domain.com. All right, this is so much better than sitting at the cafe having a coffee. Of course, now I'm a little out of range, but that's why I don't go anywhere without one of these guys. Um, and of course, now I've, I've modded this just a bit, so uh, with a little bit of a sniper scope, I can actually kind of just dial it in just right. Gotta love that RPSMA connector. Um, so anyway, I'm here in the new Pineapple interface, and I, I guess I'll show you, like, you know, so we've talked about some of the tools. Maybe I'll just give a quick demo of like some clients connecting and whatnot. Uh, what we see over here on the right are our, um, our DHCP logs. So I can see I've had a BlackBerry, my iPad, uh, this iPhone, another BlackBerry, and an Android. In fact, I know this Android, this Mac address, to be uh, my cell phone. So if I actually check my cell phone here, and uh, yeah, you can see this is, if I go over to my Wi-Fi settings, actually says this is a fake there's no access point around called this is a fake but since it's sent out a probe request saying hey is this is a fake around uh the pineapple's seen that and then if i come down here to my association log i see there we go this is a fake along with the rest of the people that think they're connected to t-mobile and jbuggy att wi-fi scs uh go go in flight that's a fun one in fact that's this ipad here if i take a look at the uh internet connection settings here, you see it says go, go, in flight, and it automatically connects to that because previously this uh, tablet was on an airplane that had the go, go, in flight internet service available. And that, that's the thing is, you know, to have that kind of open Wi-Fi to where you can let clients connect, even if you do ask them to pay for the service later, it has to be open or else how would they connect, you know? And I guess you could like, you know, go on the intercom and be like, greetings all airport customers, the WPA password is EEF5204D6A. Like, come on. No, that's not going to happen. All right, so continuing with the uh, taking a look here, uh, we've seen the DHCP log over here. My ARP log actually shows the IP addresses of those connected clients. The association log shows what access points they think they're connected to. I'm seeing a lot of ATT Wi Fi because that's what the coffee shop over there is providing. And this is a fun one URL Snarfer. Uh, great tool, DSNF. Go ahead, just add that in to this because you know it's one of the tools you would just automatically use anyway. So to make things easy, I'm just going to go ahead and pull up my phone and browse to let's say example.com, which is a great domain. So my phone's browsing to example.com. You see, it's forwarding to iana.org, and then over here in the URL snarfer. It's just going to go ahead and all of this updates on a couple of seconds interval. There we go, example.com. And now I can see that's where that client has gone on to. Now, to make it even more fun, remember, uh, what was it, a couple months back, Paul and I went down to UC Berkeley and we had fun with Pineapple Mark II doing a little bit of fishing. And it's amazing how, uh, it's just, it's, it's actually really saddening how effective that is considering how easy it is. It almost feels like cheating. But uh, I mean, if it's that easy, why not? So what we've done is we've added in uh, DSNF, or uh, the part of the DSNF tools, uh, DNS spoof allows us to say, oh, if you're going to this domain, actually give it this IP. So you can see DNS spoof here is currently disabled, but if I click edit over here, ooh. there we go, we have a giant list of the uh, domains and IP addresses, and all of that forwards to our landing page down here, and you see that just goes to redirect.php, and then we do all our fun stuff, and you know, reference that previous episode on how we uh, did a little bit of spoofing there, but it's just a matter of coming over here, clicking start. Entropy Bunny starts it up, Bob's your uncle. Same thing with the ngrep tool. Ngrep is really cool. We've talked about ngrep before in like season five and how you can use it to do like deep packet inspection and filtering just like you would with grep except on the network. So if I click edit on that, we can see here are the different options. I've got one in here to capture cookies. This is great for sidejacking attacks where I'm like, great, I got your Facebook cookie. Now I plug that into my browser, which, you know, there's a great Firefox plugin for editing your cookies. And then, uh, you know, you just, it's just a couple of fields. Refresh the page, you're logged in as them. It's like sidejacking, woohoo. Um, and then, you know, because I did this, uh, this interview with um, CBS recently, they wanted me to demonstrate some of the like really nefarious stuff. So, you know, here's, and this is like, just looking for anything that looks like a social security number. Same thing with here with a credit card. Obviously, I'm not promoting anything uh, nefarious like that, but just to kind of give you an idea of like, yes, if it's in plain text and it's going over the wire, 
well, you're an idiot, don't do that. And uh, this is demonstrating that because it's like just pulling in clients who think they're connected to their corporate wireless or whatever it may be. But again, the idea with this interface being super simple to you know, make changes to those, you just you know, update your NGRAP and then click you know, update NGRAP, same thing here with your DNS spoof, same thing here with you know, all of the different configuration files. So you know, to, to start that, it's just a matter of clicking start. And continuing along with the whole idea that it's like your consumer router meets hacker meets bulletin board system from the 80s, under the advanced tab here, uh, we actually see our kernel IP routing table. This is what's enabling internet connection sharing. And we can just go ahead and add routes right in here. If, say, we're troubleshooting and we, we want to ping, say, uh, we want to ping google.com and just come over here and it just pings the host just like you would expect to find on the troubleshooting section of your home router. The idea being try to make it as easy as possible. There we go, there's our results. Things, same thing with trace route. Clearing the pineapple cache, this is for say, you've got a battery powered, you, you unplug it before you stop the services, you still got stuff in your log files, well you can just go ahead and clear the cache so you're not looking at ghost data from a previous session. Uh, same thing with factory reset, if you really bork it, there's backup of all the config files their ability to reboot it. Um, and then this is my favorite thing. This is the last feature creep thing I added was just the ability to execute any arbitrary command. So I can do ls tac la slash www and cat slash etc config wireless and any commands you want, one per line, execute commands, it refreshes, gives you the results. The beautiful thing in this is Wi-Fi Pineapple.com now have the ability to go ahead and like update it and uh, you know add features because I'm not done playing with this, but I hope you guys have fun playing with this. Of course, all of this is just built on PHP. And uh, so like any web server, I'm using UHTTP built into here, or nano HTTP, whatever you want to call it, uh, or micro, I guess. And the um, yeah, pretty much PHP and a couple of script files and tools that are built into OpenWRT, some of our favorite man-in-the-middle tools. A lot of these are actually still available for Kamikaze. Uh, this is running a bleeding-edge version, but uh, you know the, the previous versions might be able to get you know some of these packages moved over in the, the clean interface. And then finally, last part of the tour, the about page, where we pretty much give props and say, you know, please hack responsibly. Um, other than that, uh, Actually, honestly, all of this hacking has worked up an appetite. I think we should talk about kind of the future of this and where we're going, but uh, first I think I might need some schnitzel. This is so good. This is what I'm talking about. Why go to the coffee shop when you could stay here and hack at the Baltic and Point Richmond? Get yourself some Wiener Schnitzel and some Bratwurst and all the good yummy stuff. Gigantic beers, pineapples. So what I was thinking was, I just kind of like let you guys know that I'm really stoked about the project. I've spent the last like month and a half working on the code for it. I think I mentioned something in the block about some of the weird stuff I found with like NoHop and you know piping stuff to at. So I'll have the source code out. WiFiPineapple.com is the place to find all the stuff. I'm updating it with um, a whole bunch of different like, like tutorials and guides and things of that nature. And uh, I'm really stoked about like the idea of since we've moved basically essentially where the clients connect on the machine to you know say taking um, like a rig like this and a second pineapple and kind of like piggybacking them together, you know, one connect to the internet and the other one uh, provide the, the Yazaga to everybody else. And, you know, because I actually tried to create a virtual access point, turns out while well, you can basically create another AP in here with like Airmon NG and stuff, it's only going to go into monitor mode, not master mode. So unfortunately, the radio is actually Uno radio, or Eins radio, I guess we would say here in, in uh, the Baltic. But uh, yeah, that's kind of the, the direction of the pineapple. I'm really stoked to see 
what you guys think about this project because it's something that we've been passionate about on the show here for such a long time. And again, it kind of goes with the whole theme of what we love is things that take advantage of those inherent trusts that you know the machine has in the network or in the human or whatever it may be. So uh, definitely leave us your feedback. Go and get involved in uh, the forums. We've got a Yazaga forum all set up. I can't say thank you enough to Rob and Sebastian Movix, everybody, for uh, getting involved in the project. And of course, the Baltic for, uh, for the German food and, and Das Boot. So uh, yeah, anyway, with all of that said, uh, Sloan Chair, or uh, how does it go? <laughs> what is it again? Prost. 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 <laughs> Cheers. Mm. Oh, that's an attitude adjustment. <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> Not bad. Pull once more. <laughs> Domain.com is owning the competition with cheap domain names and hassle-free service. Our Hack5 fans are making Domain.com one of the fastest growing domain registrars in the world. And if you're setting up a website to show off your pictures of your cat, brag about your new boating skills, or do something business related, Domain.com is the best place to buy a domain name for your new idea. Domain.com's easy checkout process makes it simple to find your domain name and set up your website without hassles. Domain.com's domain discovery system quickly shows you available names, making it easy to select the domain extension that's right for you. Find a suite.com or get a .co and save a character. Already have a domain somewhere else? It's cool. Transfer it to Domain.com for only $7.61 and get an extra year free. The guys at Domain.com are huge fans of Hack5 and they want to hook up other Hack5 fans. Use the coupon code HAK5 and get 15% off your next domain purchase or transfer. It's only $6.47 for transfers. Don't forget, when you think domain names, think domain.com. It's time once again for the nibble, and this week a very passionate Sitwan writes in to say that pretty much anywhere you would normally use a bash for loop in your scripts, you can go ahead and instead use xargs. And the advantage is that with xargs you can pass on a tack p and then the number of threads to run. Now, of course, the number of threads for the job in parallel, because in today's multi-core hardware, why wait around while one of your cores is doing all the actual work? That's an awesome tip. If you've got one, send it over to hack5.org slash nibble. We'd love to hear from you. Steam got hacked. You know those cats that let you download those hot games for PC or Mac through a forum exploit. Those hackers gotcha. Credit cards, passwords, the whole enchilada. An FBI NSA joint investigation ends in a takedown two years in the making. Queries for iTunes and h and Block sent peeps to ads that put mills in hackers' pock. Ets and Democrats said stop it. Republicans couldn't have the vote votes to oust it. Net neutrality rules, but still don't toast it. Obama already threatened to veto it. And the pineapple Mark III is in the house. Built in man in the middle of tax. Poison DNS or just eavesdrop on connects. Yeah, you know the deal. Peace to Colleen and Eleanor Mills. Ha! One time for your mind. I'm Dale Chase. Those are your hacker headlines. <laughs>